Okay, so we're, we're live. Um, yeah, I was asked this great uh, question about, you know, especially if you're doing uh, self inquiry, Muji, the observer, like, uh, you know, if you've had some time off work and then you go and you get back into an intense job, you know, how can you sort of maintain things? And the way I would, you know, I loved Muji and spent uh, a lot of time with him. Uh, and he's, you know, he's great. He's got some wonderful uh, YouTube videos out there, lots of them. But the, you know, it's the thing of like to transcend a situation which is unfamiliar does take work, you know. And I, I basically, you know, uh, I do three things here. One is uh, the observer of self-inquiry to transcend uh, how the ego gets caught up in experience, and also if there's large um, emotional emotions that come up, I teach a thing which is, you know, ma mainly from Hawkins, which I call Feel the Feelings, uh, which is just allowing experience to be experienced without any ego interference. And I also love doing the uh, course lessons as well, and applying that to situations to transcend, to tra transcend that ego identification. So, like, especially if you've had, you know, if you're doing the observer and you're not doing much, uh, then it may seem easy, it may seem difficult, depends what comes up. But uh, when you're going into an intense work where you've got a lot of responsibility, or if you're going into, like, a, a heavy responsible role or a management role, uh, it's, a ba it's a balancing act. You know, th there's, like, when you have to, when the ego has to identify with a lot of complicated and difficult issues, especially for the first time, it, it can lead to a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, energy going to to the focus of the of the head. Mm -hmm. So you can be cut, you can go in, in it, you can go quite heavily into the head. Uh, but the way I would do that, it, it just depends, you know. Like, if you're able to, or you're quite autonomous, or you can do it whenever you have the chance. You know, it's like. Well, you know, if you if you get caught up into something, like let's say that the boss goes, "This is your project for today," and then suddenly you're you you go into into the head, you get attached, and you start to project, and start to use your mind. You can just always like every now and then, you know, who am I or what am I that is getting attached or going into projections or fear around this? So you just like the, the way I like to explain it is you just take a quick reading. You know, suddenly if there's a, a experience, identification of the body, a, a identification with the body, or feelings within the body, or thoughts are becoming, uh, you know, th there's identification going on with any of these, or all of these things. And if you take a quick read, like what's observing? You know, so let's say you're in the observing state, or you're in the non-dual state, and then suddenly the boss runs up and shouts in your face, like, get this done by 1 p.m. today. So you might go out, you know, suddenly, you know, there may be some identification with thoughts, suddenly some fear, maybe experience in the stomach, you start, you may become suddenly attached to your body. So, you know, immediately, like, what, well, what's observing all of this? Well, who am I? What am I? So, again, what's observing the thoughts that suddenly become active? And as you do that, then they won't be so attached, they'll be like, they'll be light, you see. If you go to that which is observing the fear, or the identification of the body. Again, you know, something's observing all of this. So each time you do that, it, it'll be less sticky the next time. You know, and you, or you can just, if you're quite advanced, then you'd be able to do it quite quickly. You see, you'd, you'd be able to do it in the observer state. I find that, you know, once you, if you just keep doing the observer, what, you know, things get hooked into, basically. The attachments or identifications occur. And then if you, as these occur, then of course, there needs to be the realization that something's observing that which has suddenly become identified with. It just depends. Are thoughts being identified with? Is, the, is fear? Or just take a quickly unhook. Be the observer of that which is, you know, something self centered, something limited. You know, so suddenly the experience of self is limited rather than in the in the pure witnesser state. You know, now the experiencing is limited or identified with limits. So you just unhook from whatever is limited. As you keep doing that, <clears throat> for me as well, you know, you, you'll start to have a shift in consciousness. You know, like for me, uh, like, you know, uh, you know, I came from a very ego-based background working in the stock market. 
And it was very, very fear-based with a lot of thinking and a lot of worry about uh, uh, money and fear or losing your job or having a bad CV if you don't perform well and all of, the, all of this stuff. But again, you know, like who, you know, who am I that's afraid of this? Who am I that's afraid of losing my job? So you go to the, I mean, once you're in the witnesser, of course, you know, the witnesser is not afraid. You know, the witnesser is not in projections of the future. You see, there's suddenly that thing. And what we know from Hawkins' work, when you're in those states, it's those, and of course, in Miracles says this, you know, my security, my security lies in God, you see. My security lies in God. So when I'm in the identified ego state, actually, that is not the source of my security. When I'm in the state that my boss is the source of my security, that's, an, uh, uh, that's a limited, fear-based, uh, identified uh, state, which is not based in truth. Actually, they're not. So once, once you go into, once you detach, once you let go of the identification, you're back in the witnesser state, then that witnesser state will naturally bring everything that's in, that's things. And things which are not in resonance with, with you, or things which are resonance at that higher vibration will come to you, but also things which are not in resonance in that may fall away, and that may bring up fear, but you know, relationships may fall away, jobs which aren't in alignment with a higher vibration may fall away, but usually if it's, <clears throat> but you can do this in stages, you know, like you can just keep transcending throughout the day and witnessing, you know, like if I have a new situation, I have to like transcend or go to the observer of whatever is hooking in, whatever is getting caught up, either in the thoughts or in the body, or, or it's stories about certain things around money or around the past. But once you transcend them, you, you know, uh, from of course the miracles perspective, you get like a miracle and shift in perception. Like actually, no, the job is not the source of my security. Even if I get fired, you know, but actually, you know, that source is the source, you know, something better will come along or I'll be in resonance with something or it's not needed or it, it wasn't the right thing. So you, you see it from a different, while, while you're in the fear-based perspective, you think, no, my life depends on keeping this job and being in an adrenalized, limited state. So you, you can let that go. So you, you just keep transcending, you, can, you know, you can transcend by going to that which is hooking in, the observer, or you can do, if you get a few minutes, you can, if you get a, like a huge fear reaction, you can go to the toilet and you feel the feelings in the toilet. Toilets are great churches, you know, to, to get away. Or do your, you know, do, do um, Pray for a miracle, a shift in perception around the manager or around the money or God did not create uh, fear in this situation so it is not real. So you just do whatever and then eventually everything, you know, as the, you allow the emotions to, to release and as you just keep going to the witnesser, then eventually it becomes a pure, you're able to stay uh, in that state, in, in, a, in, a, in a witnessing state, you see. Like I always share, like if you've done a lot of, uh, I mean, I know there's some people in this room who are very advanced, but after a while these states, if you transcend the hooks, then you can maintain an effortless witnessing state in those situations after you've transcended the hooks and you no longer hook in. Because once you transcend a hook, you don't hook in, you see. You, you know, like, oh, you, a thought may arise. Of course, in miracles, they call it meaning, a meaningful thought or a special thought may arise. Like, if my boss doesn't like me, then, uh, you know, I'm going to feel insecure. Yeah. So that, suddenly that thought keeps arising. So if you keep going to the, the witnesser of that, then eventually that thought won't come up because it'll just, just disappear. Because it's like, it now has no, no hook, you see. Uh, yeah. I suppose going from A Course in Miracles perspective, we say like, the table is equally as meaningless as the cup, which is as equally as meaningless as this person, which is as equally as meaningless as a 50 pound note. So as you keep doing that, those things which the ego attached to or have meaning projected onto them start to dissolve. And so you can now maintain the, the, the witnessing state or, or the, the flow state. Because, you know, if, if 50 pounds is meaningless and if your boss is meaningless, uh, then there's nothing to hook in. The ego doesn't identify. It's like, you know, if you've totally transcended, if the boss, you know, it doesn't even matter. If the boss says you're fired, you know, it's like a big deal, you see. It's like it still is, it has no meaning, you see. It's like if a, if, a, if a leaf falls from that plant, is someone going to go into trauma after you've transcended the fear of a leaf falling? It's, it's, it's meaningless. So if, if, um, 
if a boss sort of says you're fired, if there's no meaning in that, because that's not the source, then they, it has no effect. But if there is ego meaning, then there'll be an attachment or a hook or an identification. So it's a great opportunity. And uh, I'll just share, I mean, I know people experience this. You know, often when you transcend a difficult situation, the miraculous happens after you've transcended the hooks. Like, uh, you know, I had, <clears throat> I went to, <clears throat> I go to 12 step groups. <clears throat> there was a person I had a, uh, had a uh, sort of an ego clash with. And I did all this transcending work. And on the day that it felt like it was transcended, there was nothing there. There was no hooks there. She actually came up to me and said, oh, I'm leaving the country. I just wanted to let you know. So that's, not, that's not by accident, because you transcended everything. So it's like the universe just make, makes, uh, makes some, you know, just uh, shake. So they were there for some kind of transcendence work. So that's what I would say um, with that.